It picks up, I'm going to say, 20 years later. We're middle-aged and still that stupid. We've changed physically, but mentally we have not gained a day. Harry still has an IQ of eight, and Lloyd is still Lloyd. Looking back on it, we, uh, there was an innocence to Harry and Lloyd. It was never mean, it was never violent, unless it was to each other, physically, boom, then we, you know. But it was never, there wasn't an edge to it. We weren't going after any particular group of people. We were just stupid. And there's a, there's a, a, a joy in watching that, you know. It's, it's, you know, it's not for everybody, but everybody's watching it. I was in for the sequel when the Farrelly's and Jim said they wanted to do it, finally. And, and, uh, uh, but they said, we really want to do it. We want this one to be better than the first one, and that's going to take some time. And um, so they took the time on the script. There were at least five drafts, maybe six, and just trying to live up to ourselves. I mean, when we made the first one, you know, we thought 14-year-old boys would be impressed, but who knew that the demographic would be from 8 to 80? When you're in a movie with Jim Carrey, you follow, you know, because Jim's mind, his creative genius, is, it's unique. It's like all those guys, you know, it's like Peter Sellers or Jonathan Winters or Robin or all those guys. It's uniquely their own. Only Jim Carrey would think to do it this way. And so, smartly, I'd made Harry follow Lloyd. You know, where are we going now? So there's always like a second, a half second delay on whatever Lloyd was getting me to do next. And that was just a smart thing to do as an actor because we want him to lead. We want Jim Carrey going face first into the wall and Harry right behind him. So. Uh, they've caught that in the second one. The chemistry's there, the friendship's there off camera. We like each other, and that translates when they roll film. Adele is, is uh, you know, one of the villains in the, in the, in the film, and uh, Laurie Holden uh, from Walking Dead is playing that. And it's fun to watch people come into this, as I did 20 years ago. Uh, you know, you hear this less is more, you know, all the time. On Dumb and Dumber, more is more. And uh, we start at more. And then we go higher. So it's, it's fun to watch, you know, actors like Laurie, who've really, you know, dealt in realism and in a naturalistic approach to acting, to bring it up and to do things that they wouldn't ordinarily do anywhere, let alone on camera. And uh, I'm proud of her. She... Uh, she goes, she goes some places that I don't think Lori even knew she was going to go. And again, you know, we're just here to provide opportunities for people to make complete fools of themselves. One of the things the Farrelly's did so well was to harken back to the first one. They pulled elements forward um, that will remind those who loved the first one that we have not abandoned it. We're only expanding on it. Everything the Farrelly's bring back, whether it's the Mutt Cuts van, whether it's Freda Felcher, whether it's Billy with the birds, we top what we did in the first one. They come in and then they, there it is, oh, and you're, oh God, oh, and then we top it. That's, what, that's why I think they've really, uh, they've really hit it with the sequel. Hey guys, stay with me because I've got a really interesting movie fact from Taxi Driver. The dialogue in the most iconic scene, you're talking to me, was it actually written in the script? Robert De Niro completely improvised the whole thing. As the screenplay said, Travis speaks to himself in the mirror. Well, obviously not. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to keep up to date. And remember, one hand washes the other. Bye bye.